blessed Sunday to all of you. Welcome to CGC family. We are glad that you are here with us. So may I invite everyone to stand as we read Psalm 92 verses 1 to 5. Psalm 92 verses 1 to 5. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praises to your name, O Most High, to declare your steadfast love in the morning and your faithfulness by night, to the music of the lute and the harp, to the melody of the lyre. For you, O Lord, have made me glad by your work. At the works of your hands, I sing for joy. How great are your works, O Lord! Your thoughts are very deep. Let us pray. Gracious and almighty God, we praise and thank you, Lord God, for your sending your son, Jesus Christ. And because of him, we can come here and worship you. And that is the purpose that we are here. Bless us, O Lord. Prepare our hearts as we worship you and to know you more through the preaching of your word. Bless us also, Lord God, as we continue to worship, as we have fellowship with one another, as we encourage one another, Lord. Coming here together makes us glad and makes us stronger in our faith because we see our fellow brothers and sisters worshiping you and you alone. Thank you so much, Lord God, for bringing us here. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. For our memory verse, it's found in Colossians chapter 3, verses 12 to 13. Please read with me. Okay? Ready? Go. Colossians chapter 3, verses 15 to 13. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive whatever grievances you have against one another. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. As we read this again, let this be the, uh, no, let, let, not let this be, this is our identity as God's people. So let's, as we read this again, this is your identity in the Lord. So if you want to do some actions, why not, okay? In Japan, when they memorize or when they say something, they do it with actions because it helps them memorize and use more senses to memorize something, okay? Ready? Colossians chapter 3, verses 12 to 13. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourself with compassion Kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive whatever grievances you have against one another. Forgive as the Lord forgave you, making the cross. Because the cross is the ultimate sign of forgiveness. All right? Okay, so please memorize that one. It's a very nice passage. For the kids' church, they are now back to lower ground floor with the newly re renovated rooms. So bring your kids every Sunday, 9.45 a.m. Their topic next week will be kindness. Okay, so they're back here in the lower ground floor. So please be guided accordingly. And this coming July 19, 2 p.m. Friday, CTF will have a summer outreach at Philippine Island Kids International Foundation Incorporated. In short, it's P P K F I. Okay, P K F I. So meeting place is at CGC. So for the youth, be there before 2 p.m. because 2 p.m. we were we're going to depart, going to the orphanage. To our brothers and sisters, if you if the Lord calls you to help or partner with us, you can pray with us, pray for us. Or you can also donate uh, school supplies for the target kids. We will distribute them to 75 kids in the orphanage. So deadline of donations will be until July 19. That will be this Wednesday. Okay. So for more details, please contact me or Ati Jen Asuncion. 
So please do pray for us. Next week is BSOP Sunday, and we have a speaker from, of course, BSOP. And on the afternoon of that Sunday, he will be teaching the introductions to apologetics. Pastor, are we going to be trained how to apologize? No, this is not apologizing. This is how to, how to defend your faith in the face of this world. So, please uh, register. This, uh, this will be at 2.30 p.m. to 4 p.m. at CGC Sanctuary. Okay? So, online registration link is available at CGC Community. Uh, or you can also inquire from your care group leaders. For more information, you can contact me or at the mail sheet. Okay, this is what a lot of you are waiting for, especially for the youth. Fun night is back, so praise the Lord. So it will be on July 28th, Friday. Food and drinks are available at Cross Point. So for the order form, or you want to order, uh, just contact Antoinette or any of the care group leaders. So this is the best time to connect with the people. And of course, we are hot. CGC is currently looking for a logistics and events coordinator. So if you see all these qualifications in you or on your friend, please do give this number or inform at the mail sheet and send your resume. Okay? The ever vibrant full of fun and energy, our seniors fellowship. Whenever you see them, you will really I know, feel that more alive than ever, all right? So July 29, that will be on 10 a.m. at CGC Sanctuary, okay? And the delicious lunch will be provided. That is for our seniors fellowship. And their fellowship really is full of fun and excitement. All right, baptism candidates, let's pray for them. We are uh, grateful to see them. Uh, most of them are youth. So let's pray for them as they tell the world about their relationship with Jesus. The schedule of baptism is on August 6, 2.30 at CGC. For our offering, giving is an act of worship to our Almighty God that is very true to me, especially. And last week, we talked about this also. Because in giving, in uh, tithing or offering to the Lord, I learned obedience, humility, and full surrender, knowing that everything that we have is His. All right? So when we give to the Lord, it is an act of worship. So as the Lord moves you to give, uh, we have options to give online or bank, or we have offering box, boxes at the back. Okay? So may I ask everyone to stand as we worship God through psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody to the Lord with our hearts. Indeed, it's a great day to worship our God today. A great day to praise Him for what He has done. For He is victorious over our de uh, victorious over death and through our sins. Amen? Sing our first song. <laughs> Cross the empty 
forever grateful for all your promises for all your unimaginable love your grace oh lord lord we continue to worship your beautiful name
beautiful clap of praise. Thank you, music team, for worshiping the Lord with us. Once again, let's give God a round of applause. There's no other name that we can be saved. I want you to remain standing because I don't want you to sit and then stand up. Bring out your Bible and we'll look at our passage this morning. Our passage this, mo- our passage this morning, as you can see in there, we'll be looking at 1 John chapter 1, verses 5, and we'll cover a little bit of uh, chapter 2 as well. Okay? So 1 John Chapter 1, verse 5. I'll be reading from ESV. Right, here we go. Listen well. This verse 5 is quite the driving force of this morning's message. Verse 5. This is the message we have heard from Him and proclaim to you that God is light and in Him is no darkness at all. Verse 6. If you say we have fellowship with Him while we walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light, as He is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, His Son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say we have not sinned, we make Him a liar. Okay, let's go to uh, chapter 2. My little children... I'm writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. He is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the world. Okay, up until there in verse 2, may God bless us in the reading of His Word. His words are very powerful. Please be seated. Um, I really want us to read the verse because no matter how... A preacher delivers the message. The content is very important. This is God's word. And that's why I want us to go back immediately to verse 5. Because right at the bat, when you keep on reading verse 5, you read it again and again, you cannot help but ask yourself a question. As I was reading this, this question stood out. What message? What is this message about? What should we do with this message? If we've heard of this message, what should we do about it? No? And then you could ask yourself, have I heard of this message or wala pa ba? Such question would stand out. Verse 5 says, this is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you. And this morning, that is why we have the title. Okay, everybody read. One, two, three, go. We are. Louder. One, two, three, go. We are. Messengers. Right at the bat, this message. Whether an individual is a Christian or not, such a person is a messenger. No? That is part of our nature in our words, in our actions, our, our decisions, even our indecisiveness, we, when we do not take action, even how we carry ourselves, we always display a message. We communicate something. And so we can ask ourselves, what am I communicating? What message am I displaying or throwing or proclaiming to others? Let that question sink in, in your life. What message are you displaying to your sitmate? What message are you proclaiming to your kids, to your spouse, to your peers, your subordinates, your people around you? Words, actions, even the way you dress, Everything, all interactions that you have with other people, what message are you proclaiming to others? As you examine, as you reflect, do you find yourself living a life riddled with lies and falsehood? There's this media company that's based in London called SWNS Digital, and they wrote an article entitled, Top 20 Most Common Lie. I'm not going to read all the 20. I'm not going to go through all the items they've listed, but let me just mention a few. Now, number one, they said, we say the words, I forgot. Did we really forget or we just don't want the conversation to continue? Or we just want to protect ourselves. Number two, I'll do it tomorrow. Really? You're going to really do it tomorrow when you're Gym buddy tells you, oh, see you tomorrow sa gym, ha? Or your accountability partner, hey, let's meet in this coffee shop. Let's study the work together. Sige, I'll be there tomorrow. Are you really going to be there tomorrow? Number three, I am listening. Are you really listening? 
Number four, I'm busy then. When someone wants to meet with you, set an appointment with you, and wala pagani na decide what time, where, I might be busy by that time. Because you're just not comfortable being with that person. These are the common things that we say. I'm stuck in traffic, but really, you left home very late or you slept late, you did not prepare early. Christianity Today also wrote of an article about lying, and the author was retelling of his story the moment when he forgot about his appointment with his former student. He was supposed to meet this former student, but he forgot, and he only realized 90 minutes after their set time. So one hour and, thir- uh, one hour and 30 minutes later on, he called his former student. But before he was trying to... But before he tried to explain, his former student already had an assumption, assumption saying that it's okay, sir, you may have overslept because it's a long semester. The author, he had this split, decision, split second to make a decision whether he would continue with the student's assumption to stand or do something else. Now, let me read a direct quotation of his article. He wrote, I could let him think that I had just overslept, I could make up another story, or I could come clean and tell him simply that I had forgotten our appointment. So he sensed that inner struggle there. He continued to write in his article saying, people might call this little white lie, people might call this not saying the whole truth, Whatever people would call it, he had defined it or described it as deception already. Brothers and sisters in Christ, friends, the same question I throw to you, what message does your life proclaim to others? The readers of this letter in 1 John, they are facing some heresy. Other people wanting to deceive them as indicated in 1 John 2.26. So let me just set that up as a background. I write these things to you about those who are trying to deceive you. There were these people who are trying to deceive them and some of the readers of this letter are already being deceived. They are living a different kind of life already. Thus comes the warning of 1 John. John is telling them if you want to have a true fellowship with God, you cannot say or live a life that you are also walking in darkness or living in sin. No? You cannot have fellowship with God if you continue walking in darkness. There it is. There's the lie. Man generally shouts, we, have, we can have fellowship with God. We are already saved. We can worship God the way we want. We do not need someone to tell us how we can save ourselves, how we can reach God on our own, because we could do it. But this is, uh, this is the deception or the lie that the readers of John are displaying. And so that's why John is reminding them in verse 5, this is the message that I have heard and now I proclaim to you. But in contrast, what were the kind of message the people in 1 John are displaying? Let's look at verse 6. When we read verse 6, It says, if we say we have fellowship with Him while we walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. And so the first point, the message that we are proclaiming to others, that is the question we need to ask ourselves. Verse 6, as an implication, those who are saying that we can have fellowship with God and walk in darkness are already living a lie. You see it there on verse 6. We lie and do not practice the truth. That is the implication of already of the message what we are proclaiming to others. Similarly in verse 8 as well. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. There's the idea of deception. And even in verse 10, there's the idea of lying as well. If we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar. If you open your Bible again, look, look at verse this six verse, three verses, verse six, verse eight, and verse 10. Look at them all together. All starts with the idea, if we say, 
If we say, if we say the message that we are proclaiming to others, the way we live our lives, the things that we communicate, we need to examine that. Are we proclaiming the same way as the people of the readers here in 1 John chapter 1 in this, in this epistle? There's deception, lies, falsehood, partial truth, scam, fake, in, uh, inauthenticity. All these things is very prevalent nowadays. The movie Sound of Freedom came out last July 4 in the U.S. I had an encounter with this just a few weeks ago. Just looking at some uh, materials. And as I read more about it, there's so much deception or so much trying of suppressing this movie, uh, what, what this movie is about. No? Tim Bullard, who worked in the Homeland Security in the U.S., uh, was focusing on child trafficking. He's worked there for many years, but he retired, but continued to help uh, child, tra child trafficking victims through his nonprofit organization, Operation Underground Railroad. And finally, the movie was shown just last week, July 4. But you know what the background of the movie is? The script was actually written and developed, started all the way back in 2015, shooting finished in 2018, and there's a deal to promote it given to Century Fox. But a year later, 2018-2019, Century Fox was merged with Disney. And after that merger, the film, which is done already, was shelved, was just placed there and not, not promoted, not shown. But fortunately, Angel Studios, the one who produced uh, The Chosen, The Life of Jesus Christ, um, got the rights and proceeded uh, with all the arrangements and eventually... Uh, they got the rights, and it was shown last, um, last July 4. Tim Bullard, the actor Jim Cavaziel, um, the actor who also played The Passion of Jesus Christ, uh, agreed with the principles of Angel Studios. And there, uh, that's the background. Let's go back to Disney. Disney did not have any official statement why they shelved this video. Now, however, internet is already is, social media is already speculating why. Because of the fact that Disney, a child-focused film, studio, child-loving, family-friendly film, which is supposed to be promo promoting the family values, why wouldn't they, why did they shelve this movie that's about child trafficking, exposing the darkness of the child trafficking rings, wouldn't show this, wouldn't educate, inform the world, the people about this. And so there's already that message of in authenticity or disalignment of their values and their actions? Was it just because they, they're foreseeing a low profit? Or was it more? There's already that issue in Hollywood. And even a magazine called Ro Rolling Stone Magazine even have this article on this film, Sound of Freedom, just to slight, not directly, but a slight discouragement for people to see the Sound of Freedom. Look at the title of the magazine written by Miles Klee. Sound of Freedom is a superhero movie for dads with brain worms. They were very discouraging ang title na for you to watch it, uh, but you might be interested, so curious na noon ka, mag-watch na noon ka. But look at some of the lines sa iyang articles. Let me go to the underlined part, Diane. Uh, start with now. Now, as in, as in the 1980s satanic panic, they won't even face the fact that most kids who suffer sexual abuse are harmed not by a shadow cabal of strangers, so not child trafficking, but most kids now are just victims of the hands of a family member, not, not the child trafficking ring. Let's go to the next slide, please. To know thousands of adults will absorb sound of freedom, this vigilante fever dream, and come away thinking themselves better informed on a hidden civili uh, civilizational crisis, well, it's profoundly depressing. Uh, they're, they're describing Tom Hollard as vigilante already since he did the nonprofit organization. They were quiet when he was still part of the Homeland Security, but once he continued it by his own nonprofit, they're describing him as vigilante and profoundly depressing. So there's that deception, or this nature of deception, suppression of truth, very prevalent in our society. When the people who are very influential, Hollywood, uh, Disney films, 
And unfortunately, it has even seeped into our Christian community. Satan, the father of lies, is never tired in throwing us his deceptive schemes. I am reminded of the serpent and Eve and their deception scheme. Just a few days ago, we were doing a devotion on Genesis 1 up until we're now in Genesis 3. And Adam and Eve blaming each other, blaming the serpent. They were not willing to admit to the truth. Now, there are few, few people today, few Christians today, who think that they are sinlessly perfect and live a life of deception. They only say up until, you know, I make mistakes. I am not perfect. I am only human. But me, as a sinner, no, no, no. Occasionally, I make mistakes. But I will never admit that I am a sinner. To say that we have no sin puts us in a very dangerous place because God's grace and mercy is extended to sinners, right? It's extended to those who admit that they are sinners, not to those who only say, I am not a sinner, Murag, ano lang, 99% lang, kay okay ra kay ko. I occasionally sin, I am just imperfect, I'm only human. The gospel of God's grace is for those who say that they are sinners. For those who do not say that they are sinners, who do not accept their vulnerability, I don't think the gospel of God's grace would be applicable to them. And sadly, that's very real to many of Christians today. John is saying we cannot have fellowship with God unless we continue walking in darkness. Unless we, until we, don't, we stop the pattern of living, that living in darkness, that cycle of you know, rebellion and disobedience in God. We cannot have true and lasting fellowship with God. There will be no joy. There will always that, have that conflict and tension. So in this first point, brothers and sisters in Christ, friends, what, mes- what message, go back to that question, what are you proclaiming to others? What kind of idea, what kind of life are you proclaiming to others? It's an examination of reality for us. The next question, which is actually a better question, is what message should we proclaim to others? What message are we proclaiming? What message should we be proclaiming to others? That's point number two. And we could see that in verse 7 and chapter 2, verse 2 as well. We see the gospel there. We see the truth there. Chapter 1, verse 7 declares something like, The blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sins. No? Other verses also captures the idea that God is light and there is no darkness in Him. And so if God is light, we who are walking in darkness, we, can have, we cannot have fellowship with God who is in light. God and His Son, Jesus Christ, is our Savior. He sent His Son that He will be the propitiation for our sins. We could see that that's the message that we should be proclaiming. And when we look at this message, this is not a message that just comes from us. Even the the apostle uh, John, when he said this in verse 5, this is the message. He did not say this is the message that I have, I have written, I have created, that I have authored. This is the message that I have heard. This is the message that I have seen. You go through verses 1 to 4, verse 5, it's not his own personal message. So, this is a message that is with authority. And this authoritative message, this is the one that we should proclaim to others and declare to those around us. We know this. We know the gospel. We've heard of John 3.16. We've heard of Ephesians 2.8.9. Eternal life, heaven, forgiveness of sins. We've heard of all these things. But let me just present it this way and focus on the idea of propitiation. The idea of substitution. The idea of atonement because we cannot pay for the penalty of our sins ourselves. We need someone who is perfect to do that. Okay? Man has ignored God, neglected God, disbelie- having disbelief in God, rebelled against God, rejected God, and so man has transgressed the laws of God, not disobeyed God. We have broken His commandments and so there has to be a payment. But since we are imperfect, we cannot pay for it. We cannot earn it. We cannot earn forgiveness by ourselves. That's where Jesus Christ comes in. 
Jesus Christ takes that substitute. He is the propitiation for our sins. So He died for our sins. Listen to this. He faced the judgment for us. He suffered the punishment for us. And He bore the condemnation for us. You remember those guilt feelings, those heaviness? You know when you commit sin, you remember those tension, those conf conflict that you have with your parents, with your friends, when there's something wrong, you did something or you offended them. Jesus, expand it. It's Jesus Christ who bore that condemnation. God's anger, God's wrath is supposed to be for us. Jesus Christ bore that, bore that wrath because He became our substitute. Let me just use one more illustration. Uh, I often use this to those who have heard me teach and preach many times. You've heard this already, but we also have some new people with us here, new friends with us here today. With the idea of propitiation, I haven't yet found a better illustration compared to the story of Aslan in Narnia, the Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, the, the book written by C.S. Lewis. The moment when Aslan volunteered himself to take Edmund's place in the stone table to be sacrificed. That is the idea of propitiation. Edmund, one of the siblings in Narnia, Edmund, um, I forgot the name of the kuya, Peter, Susan, and Lucy. Edmund went to Narnia at a different time with his sister, met the white queen. The white queen tempted him, presented him a lot of stuff, and eventually, he wanted a Turkish delight, a dessert. The white queen promised him some lavish uh, promises no? and, and some power. He will be more stronger than his brother Peter. He will no longer be the younger brother. He has more power, more authority. They would listen more to him. And when he took the bait or when he gave in to the desires or the whims of the white queen, instead of being a Narnian, he transitioned to become part of the White Queen. And now there's a separation between him, his siblings, and the people of Narnia, so Mr. and Mrs. Beaver and other characters in that story. That separation, Edmund cannot save himself, cannot bring himself back to belong to the people of Narnia. And so Aslan came in. He himself volunteered, I will take his place, he was the one who was stabbed or killed in the stone tablet so that Edmund can be restored, can be forgiven of his mistakes and be uh, restored to his siblings. Now that's the beauty of that illustration you know, as to how Jesus Christ also is our substitute, our propitiation. That should be the message that we ought to be proclaiming to others. Again, let's look at verse 7 just to bring it down. If we walk in the light as He is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus His Son cleanses us from all sin. That's the idea of propitiation. Even in chapter 2, verse 2, He is the propitiation for our sins. So again, brothers and sisters, first question, what message are we proclaiming to others? Second question, what message should we be proclaiming to others? Are we proclaiming the message of truth or otherwise? As we transition to the third item, I want us to look at the business of our life. Of course, no, as mature and seriously pursuing, a seriously growing Christian. We want to follow Christ. We have the desire to, to obey Him. I ju have just challenged you this morning to examine your life. Are you walking in the light? Or are you walking in darkness? No. You somehow have been challenged to proclaim the right message. Correct? No. However, in the business of life and as we struggle to obey God, we often lose track or forget to tell ourselves that we cannot please God by our own efforts. We cannot truly have fellowship with God in our own terms. Thus, 
as we transition to point number three, we also need to proclaim this truth to ourselves. We proclaim the message that we are proclaiming, the message that we should proclaim, we should proclaim this message to ourselves. None of us can be perfect. Verse 8 says, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is in us. Now that's the idea where point three is coming from. You are deceiving yourselves. Thus, we need to proclaim this truth to ourselves as well. Get the idea? And as we transition, let me just share a little bit about En Gedi. Because as a serious Christian, you would want to obey God. But we are not robots. We get tired. We get frustrated. We get discouraged. As we give up na lang. We don't obey God na lang. There's no point. No. We find that En Gedi. En Gedi, uh, Ray Vanderland in his ministry that the world may know, explained En Gedi. Uh, it means a place of the spring goat. Now in, in the Judean Valley, there's rocky places. This, it's very hot. There's not much trees. But there's this place there called En Gedi where there's a fountain like this, a place of the spring goat where there's fresh water, there's a living water, it's always, and so people who are traveling in the Judean wilderness will find this place, have a rest there, find refreshment. It's a rejuvenating place for them to get water, to be refreshed, and then they continue on with that journey. I cannot forget his message here as he was explaining this. We Christians, when we want to follow Christ, we want to obey Him, we give our best, right? But when we get tired, we need to have En Gedi. We need to find that place. That's why we have the quiet time. We have our weekly Sunday worships. We have those spiritual disciplines to have this En Gedi. We, have that, we need to have that retreat. But He said, don't stay there forever. Don't stay in that En Gedi for the rest of your life. Why? Because there are people in the world who are lost as well. There are people in the world who are thirsting. You need to bring them to where you are. So you go out again, serve, minister, teach. You get tired again. You go back again to that En Gedi. Find refreshment. Find, find um, be recharged again. And so that's the idea of point three. We should not just proclaim this to others, but we should also proclaim this to ourselves. Believers who claim to have fellowship with God and yet still walk in sin is lying, not just to others, but even to themselves. As I study this passage, it's really very interesting. Normally, when we lie to others, we only, hmm, victim ako siya, he's inside my pocket, no? I, I, I have an upper hand to this person. But actually, the eye, when we are lying, especially in this context here, when we are lying, we are also deceiving ourselves. And I think it can be applied as well if you just you know, generally lie like, no, uh, um, I'm stuck in traffic. Um, you lie about, no, I already paid you. Naman. General white lie, it's not just to the other person, but there's something happening within yourself. There's Maybe you could use the word decay, there's corruption, because there's change, there's change that's happening in our lives, and it's not a good change. And so the question now, do you want to continue deceiving yourself? You ask yourself while you are there seated, do I want to continue to deceive myself? Ask yourself, do I want to continue to tell myself this lie until I believe it? That's the change I think that's going to happen to us. If there's a lie, we keep on telling ourselves, we lie to ourselves, we lie to ourselves until we come to a certain point, it becomes the truth, and we believe it now. No? Do you want to continue lying to yourselves, brothers and sisters, in Christ? But don't stop there yet. There's more. There's even much more worse. You go to verse 10. I don't know if the, yeah, it's in there on the screen. Verse 10 says, earlier it was, I think, verse 8. Verse 10, if we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. So who is him here? Scholars, Bible scholars are saying it's could, it could be either God or Jesus Christ himself, but 
many uh, more, more scholars, Bible scholars are saying it's Jesus Christ. I tend to uh, agree as well that the hymn here, the, the one that we are making a liar is Jesus Christ. Because in the nearer verses, in verse 7, the, the cleansing of our sins, having fellowship, walking, it's more on focusing on Jesus. So we are kind of um, not putting value in what Jesus Christ said. So we're making him a liar if we continue to deceive ourselves, if we say that we have not sinned. So we go back to the question now. Do we want to continue lying to ourselves? Do we want to continue making Jesus Christ a liar? Do we want to continue deceiving ourselves? That's a wonderful question that we need to ask. Apart from the question, what message are we proclaiming to others? Isn't that right? It's a good question that we need to reflect as we continue living our Christian life here. However, I don't want you to go home feeling discouraged, feeling so, so difficult to live, to walk in the light, Pastor. First John also gives us a solution in verse, in, in verse 9. How should we go about this? First John 1 John 1.9 says, we are very familiar with this, if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Confession, laying out the truth, Admitting that we are sinners, admitting that we have sinned, not saying that we have no sin. That is the solution. Uh, we may live and walk in the light, no longer walk in the darkness. Coming to um, just being open to God, being in humility, admitting, acknowledging our mistakes. Abraham Lincoln on how to deal with sin, he said, It is the duty of nations as well as of men to confess their sins and transgressions in humble sorrow. Yet with assured hope that genuine repentance will lead to mercy and pardon. Spurgeon also has a wonderful a quote on this. He explains why quick confession should be, ve- should be every saint's practice. He said, it is not the nature of sin to remain in a fixed state, but like a decaying fruit, it grows more rotten. The man who is bad today will become worse tomorrow. Right? Don't think that we remain the same thing if we keep on lying. It's not a fixed state. There's going to be decay. There's going to be a process of decay. F.B. Mayer adds, Do not wait for the hour of evening prayer nor even for the opportunity of being alone. But even in the busy street, in the midst of a daily toil, lift up your heart to Christ if you have done wrong and say, I have gone astray. Let me share this last one, um, this poem from the Valley of Vision, I Confess My Sin. And as I read this, as you also read this, try to follow. This is a practical way for you to, you know, if you want to pray a prayer of confession now in your seat, you could just follow this, admitting our wickedness and asking God for His mercy. <clears throat> I confess my sin, my frequent sin, my willful sin, all my powers of body and soul are defiled. A fountain of pollution is deep within my nature. There are chambers of foul images within my being. I have gone from one odious room to another, walked in a no man's land of dangerous imaginations, pried into the secrets of my fallen nature. I am utterly ashamed that I am what I am in myself. I have no green shoot in me or fruit, but thorns and thistles. I am a fading leaf that the wind drives away. I live bare and barren as a winter tree, unprofitable fit to be hewn down and burnt. So the last question, the confession of sin and wickedness, asking for God's mercy. Lord, dost thou have mercy on me? Lord, this is who I am. In myself, barren, wicked, 
Please have mercy on me, Lord. And does the Lord show mercy? He does. The blood of Jesus Christ offers forgiveness, offers redemption for us who is willing to confess and admit his mistakes. For those who are not willing to admit, we pray for them that someday you realize things, you realize that your need of Jesus Christ, and you can admit that you are a sinner, thus having access to the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ. Brothers and sisters, my friends, if, you're, if you were lost along the way of the sermon this morning, even still, I keep on repeating the question. If, if you're lost, kanat lang na question. What message are you pro- proclaiming to others and to yourself? This is the main thing that I want you to, go, to bring home. What message are you proclaiming to others? Is it a message riddled with lies, falsehood, deception? Or is your life displaying a message filled with truth because you are walking in the light with God and not living in darkness? What you and I claim to be is also what we should be in the way we live our lives. So walk in the light and experience the fullness of joy in fellowshipping with God and His Son, Jesus Christ. Be a messenger of truth. Be a messenger of Jesus Christ. Let's bow our heads. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for um, how you have spoken to us through your word, through John the Beloved. Allows us to examine ourselves, Lord, in this time of the year. There are so many challenges, so many difficulties that we are facing, and left and right, front and back, up and down, Lord. And oftentimes we find ourselves tired and weak and anxious that we um, fail to obey you. And at times it gets weird pa, that we fail to admit that we fail you. We still feel that we are right by our own standards. We f- feel righteous. And so, Lord, we thank you for this time of examination. We come before you clean. We confess to you, Lord, our mistakes. We really cannot save ourselves. We cannot even keep on living an obedient life here. Forgive us and have mercy on us, Lord. Restore us to a full fellowship, a fellowship filled with joy with you and with your people. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's all stand to sing our closing song. Indeed, we have the gospel with us. We have the truth Nothing 
Jesus Christ, our mediator, the truth, the way, the life. Help us, Father, live lives that's honoring to you, a life that displays the truth, that we may be a blessing to those around us. Lord, we commit to you as well, Lord, our brothers and sisters in Christ who are unwell. We pray, Lord God, for healing for them. We pray, Lord God, for your provisions. We pray, Lord, for peace. We pray as well, Lord, for friends and family members um, who have lost loved ones this week. We pray, O oh God, that you help them experience your peace. We pray, Lord God, for our ministries. You continue to provide, Lord God, for 
um, our ministry, our church, as we support as well our ministry partners. So God, Lord, bless our offerings. Use this that again, Gospel Church will continue to encourage the people uh, that it influenced, the people that it uh, ministers to, Lord. Father, help us be messengers of truth, be messengers of your Son, Jesus Christ, despite the cancel culture that we are in. May we find strength and boldness in you. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Please be seated.